Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of sending email with CDO, or basically sending email by talking directly to the mail server and not going through a mail program like Outlook. If you haven't watched part one yet, go watch that first. You'll find a link down below and then come on back. Before we get started today, a little program note. I was I was I meant to mention these videos in the last lesson, but if you want to check out my other videos where I do cover sending email through Outlook, and these still work fine if you're using the classic Microsoft Outlook that comes with Office, not the new one. All right, but this one uses send object to send a report, and it's very easy to, to implement. And then I have another email uh, video that talks about sending email through Outlook, but this one uses a mail item object. All right, this one uses code that looks more like this, where you actually make a reference to an Outlook mail item. Now, I haven't tested this with new Outlook yet, so I don't, I, I don't even have new Outlook installed because uh, no, I don't like it. I don't, I'm, I don't plan on using it. But uh, if any of you have new Outlook, let me know if this method works with that. I don't think it does, but I'm not sure. All right, so I'll put links to both of those videos down below. You can check those out. All right, so continuing on, we have our forms already set here. Here we go. We got our email. We got our, our mail form. Now we need to put stuff in this button to actually send mail, right? So we're going to set up some code. Now there's going to be two modules I'm going to create. The first one has my configuration in it. The second one's going to have the actual code that sends the email. Now I do this for class so that I can set up the configuration module, put my password in it, and then I don't accidentally flash that on the screen in the future. I've done that before. <laughs> so I'm gonna make two modules. You can put these in one module if you want to. All right, they're just gonna go down here with our global modules. All right, so I'm gonna go to create, and then module, regular module, not a class module, just module. That'll open up the code window. Okay, now in here, I'm going to paste this stuff. This, this is going to be just a lot of copy and paste today because I'm not going to retype all this code. Uh, gold members, you'll find this in the code vault. You can also download my copy of the database from the website. Silver members and everybody else, well, you can either get to typing or you can use some uh, on-screen uh, OCR to grab the text if you want to. But we're going to make some public constants in here. All right. And these are settings you're going to get from your mail provider. Now, these are the settings for Gmail. You got the SMTP server, which is the actual web address of the server you're using, the port that that server uses. If you're using a secure server, usually it's 465 and you'll have use SSL set to one. You'll find a lot of unsecure servers will use port 25 and you can set SSL to zero. But again, ask your, your mail person about this, your, your, your IT guy, whoever you got to talk to. You'll also see port 587 used a lot too, okay? Uh, this is your username and password. Now, remember, for Gmail, you have to get that app password that I talked about last time. This is not just your Google login password. Okay, your email address, your app password goes here. And then I've got my timeout set to 10 seconds. In other words, if the mail server doesn't reply, timeout in 10 seconds and give an error. That seems to be about a reasonable amount of time to wait for a mail server. Okay, I'm going to save this as send mail config module mod okay save that this is the last time you're going to see this i'm going to put my password in here and then you're not going to see this anymore so get it now <laughs> okay uh, oh, oh oh wait a minute no i'm just kidding i got you there no that's not really my password there when you get the database you'll see that okay okay so there's that one now we're going to make another one create another module and this one's where the actual code is going to go for the sending of the email itself okay now, like I said, a lot of copy and paste, a lot of typing. You don't have to understand what all of this is, but this is the code that you need. This is the simplest version of the code that I can put together that actually makes this work, okay? We're gonna create a subroutine called simple send email. Why simple? Well, because in the extended cut for the members, we're gonna make a whole lot more options on it. But for this is the basic one, all right? Message to, email address it's going to. Message from is the from address. that You can put your address in there. Subject and body. Those are the things you're going to send into it. All right, we create some objects in here. There's a message object, which is cdo.message, and a configuration object. These are just objects you got to set up, right? Configuration fields. Then you set up something called a schema, which basically is a set of instructions. 
And essentially, you're just setting what the options are based on those options that we looked at a second ago. All right, this is the format that it wants them in. The only options that are different in here that you might want to change, send using, there's SMTP server or the local SMTP. Usually this is only something that you do if you are running on like a Windows server and you've got mail running on that server, then your local SMTP server can just pick up the mail instead of having to authenticate on a different server. But that's almost never the case. If you're running this on a Windows server, you might want to set that to one. And if you know how to do that, then you don't need to worry about it. And then there's SMTP authenticate, which is basically you, you need to log in. All right, those are the, generally the default options. All right, so this connects us to the server basically. Then once we're connected, we set up our message object where we set up the to, from, subject, text body, the configuration, and then we send it. Okay, and then when that's all done, we free up our objects and it's done. Now, there are a ton more options. There's the reply address, a CC, a BCC, attachments, all that stuff. We'll talk about a lot of that in the extended cut. I also cover a lot of that in my email seminar. Um, we are going to also talk about some basic error handling because we just dot send and that just sends the email, but we're not getting back any kind of a response to know whether it was successful or not. So we will address that in this video. Okay. We're in this video series. I don't know if we'll get to it today. Okay. But there's the basics. That's what you need. Again, copy and paste, do whatever you got to do, get that text in your database. And like I've said in many videos, you don't have to understand every little line of code to be able to use it right? I don't understand what every little thing does in the engine of my car, but I know how to drive it. So a lot of the times, even advanced programmers just copy and paste stuff from other programmers. That's just the nature of how this works. And there's no shame in not understanding every little tidbit in here. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's give this a quick debug compile. Make sure everything's good. No errors. And now let's save this. I'm going to say yes. And let's save this as my send mail. Uh, let's call this the simple mod. Okay. All right. Let's give it a test. Let's go into our customer form, go to our send mail button and let's right click design view, right click build event. And in here, the simplest form of this is going to be simple. Send email space message two is the email address that happens to be a field, right? We got fields on here. We got email subject and body, right? So that's going to be email comma the from address is your address or your you know uh, info at my domain.com whatever i'll just put my amicron at gmail.com in here all right the subject is in the subject field and the body is in the body field that's the most basic implementation of this right save it again throw in a debug compile for good measure let's come back over to here send email all right this this is my tester Yada, 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 yada. And then I'll hit send. And okay, hold on. We got the servers not available. What did I do? Oh, you know what I did? I forgot to put my actual password back in here. So that's a good example showing you what happens if you get an error message, right? So let me put my actual password in here. And let's try that again. Send. And I didn't put anything in here to let us know when it's done. Let's do that real quick. Let's put in... Let's put in a done right at the end of all of this, all right, here. Uh, status done, so we know we're done. We don't need that exit sub right here yet. We're gonna need it later, but save that. All right, debug compile. Oh, oh that, that brings up a good point. We can't use status out here because I'm in a global module, right? And status is in this form, right? Or this form here, the status box is here and the function. So what we can do is we can put the status in this guy, design view, right click, build event, we'll put the status after that, right? Because the global module doesn't know anything about status. It's a private sub, right? Private subroutine inside of the email form. In some of my videos, I do make a global status and it just puts it in the main menu status box. All right, one more try. See, I like leaving these little errors in here because if I make these mistakes, chances are you guys will make the same mistakes too. All right, so blah, 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 blah. I sound like Alex Lifeson at the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Blah, 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 send, done. All right, let me check my inbox. 
And here I am in my inbox in Gmail. You can see there's the first one that actually went through and there's the one I just sent just now. All right, so it's working, but there's still a lot of other stuff I wanna do to it, right? I wanna do some checks to make sure that the person put in a subject and a body. I want to get a status back so I know whether or not it was successful or failed, right? And I want to log this in the person's contacts so I can come in here and see a history of what was said to them, even in email. And we'll talk about all that stuff in tomorrow's video. You know the drill. Tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. Or if you remember, you can watch it right now. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part three. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsor, Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. They're manufacturing experts specializing in Microsoft Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. Check them out at accessexperts.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. 
I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.